Hi, this is your Sapil Bharatiya and welcome to KubeCon Cloud Day Con in London. And today we have with us your own Schneider, co-creator of Dapper. Your own is great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to have you here. Uh, you are, uh, you know, of course, creator of Dapper. Talk a bit about, you know, what is Dapper all about? Dapper is a unique project within the CNCF in that it really speaks to application developers as opposed to infrastructure people. When developers need to write applications on top of Kubernetes, there is a lot going on. They need to understand how they talk to different databases, message brokers, secrets, um, stores, caches, how they write long running stateful workflows. And that is extremely complicated. Dapper gives developers a set of APIs they can use so that it encapsulates all of this hard boilerplate code and logic. So developers can focus on their IP and what matters to them instead of needing to reinvent the wheel time and time again. Excellent. And today we are also going to talk about Dapper Agents. Right. So, so talk a bit about uh, what is Dapper Agent. Dapper Agents is a framework for developers to be able to build AI-enabled agents um, that run autonomously on top of Kubernetes and outside of Kubernetes. And you hear a lot of talk about other uh, AI agent frameworks out there today. But what makes Dapper Agents really special is that it builds on top of the already battle-tested and proven Dapper workflows. Because let's face it. AI agents really become useful when you give them full autonomy. You don't want to need to maintain an agent and make sure that it actually completes its task. But AI agents are also unpredictable. And so the question is asked, if we're giving more and more responsibility for an AI agent, how do we make sure that it actually does what it needs to do and really um, drives its, its uh, scenario or what it's doing to full, complete and successful execution? And so a lot of AI agent frameworks out there today don't have those resilient building blocks to allow for that. They're great for POCs and demos, but they don't have that. Dapper agents, on the other hand, really um, make use of the Dapper workflows building block, which gives these agents the durability. So imagine you're running a complex task for an agent and your cluster shuts down or you have a network interruption or your Kubernetes pod goes down. Dapper agents will actually spin back up. It will rehydrate its state and it will continue where it left off. So it's giving you all of these AI features from one hand, on the one hand, and then it's also giving you the resiliency and durability that you would expect from non-deterministic uh, workflows like applications that we've been used to running so far. As you give example that there are other solutions, but Dapper agent is better. But what was the pain point or what are the driver that led to the creation of Dapper agents? Yeah. So a lot of developers were thinking around with uh, other agentic frameworks. And what they did was, you know, run a POC. And then they really tried to take it to pre-production, right? Or staging environments to see how it, how it handles stuff. But then as the traffic increased or, you know, pods went down or they scaled their cluster, they would see that the agents actually get disrupted and they're unable to complete their execution. And so we essentially, you know, looked at all of these agents and we came to the conclusion that they don't have the durability aspects that are needed um, to make these agentic AI systems really reliable. And Dapper has that. So um, a person came in from Microsoft and he saw the, the exact same issue and he essentially built the first version of Dapper agents um, that really gives developers these AI features coupled on top of Dapper's resilient workflow. And this really allows developers to write AI agents that are also resilient to failures. And so he contributed to the Dapper project and the CNCF and the Dapper project announced it around a month ago. Can you share some use cases if you have seen of Dapper agents? Yeah, so it's fairly new. Um, we do have uh, some companies, you know, using it today for um, or trying it out today from everything from, you know, DevOps automation, creating like an agent that automates your Kubernetes cluster all the way to an agent that is uh, serving up as a customer success representative, connecting to your uh, infrastructure's own data sources, reads data from there and actually chats back to the user to solve really complex problems, um, all the way to infrastructure automation. So agents that can actually automate your CICD pipelines. Since it's a very general purpose framework, you can, it's really a mixed bag and you can do whatever you want with it. Can you talk about what kind of community is are you seeing building around because that also reflect on use cases also so can you talk about that or it is the same community that is dapper community yeah it's um the same community as the dapper community in the end if you look at the ai agentic use cases they really span developers across the spectrum 
So those developers that are uh, engaged with Dapper um, are dealing with the same problems when it comes to agentic AI systems as the developers who are not engaged with Dapper. And that really comes from customer success to data processing, to observability, to figuring out what's going on in your environment. It's, it's a whole wide range of problems that the agentic system can solve. The reason why they can span across so many problem areas is because they are very general purpose-like. The beauty of open source is that you get instant feedback for the community. Uh, what are the feedback you're getting and what are the things in your pipeline where you're either improving or you're like, hey, this is still missing, we have to work on that. Um, great question. Um, the CNCF ecosystem is currently, in my opinion, very far removed from the AI ecosystem. And so what we want to do is really bring those two together. And something that we're hearing is that people want anthropic MCP integration. So MCP is a project from Anthropic that brings enterprise data right into agentic systems so that agents can make better decisions based on the data that they're talking to. Um, and so people want to see Anthropic's MCP server integration into Dapper agents. We think that would be an amazing first step to bring in AI workloads outside of CNCF into CNCF projects like Dapper. What's next for the Dapper agent? What are the things that you folks are working on? It's not about the fixing or improving, but what's next on the horizon for Dapper agents? Yeah, so the MCP integration is one thing to make sure that we integrate with it. Um, we also want to extend support beyond Python to C Sharp and Java, just because, you know, Python is definitely a language highly used by machine learning experts, but application developers who are going to be writing these agents are essentially coming in from a line of business uh, background. So these are C Sharp and Java mostly. So we want to extend it to them too. So that's definitely something that's going to come up fairly quickly. Yaron, thank you so much for you know, taking time out today and update us on Dapper agents. Course, and yeah. as things progress, I would love to chat with you folks again, but I really appreciate your time to thank you. Of course, thank, thank you so much. much.